Let's move on to the next dot point. This is a very important dot point. Could I get, um, maybe in five minutes I'll give you all a break as well, but could I get, Nisha, can you read out the dot point for us? Sub dot point four. Assessing how what is this question actually asking? Like, it's a very interesting question. Someone asked me the other day, you know, how much of depression, how much of schizophrenia is genetic, how much of it is environmental? It's a cool thing to understand, right? How much of, uh, is there any other diseases which we're interested in knowing how much of it is genetic heart disease, right? How much of it is genetic? How much is in your control? And how much are you just born with that or good luck? Okay. Diabetes. Yeah, diabetes is another big one. Now, does anyone know? Diabetes is, what, is one of the leading causes of death in the entire world, right? Because it causes heart disease. It causes, you know, vision problems. It causes stroke. Is it genetic or is it environmental? You have to pick. So I'm asking what percentage. It's the percentage. Pardon? Yeah, I'm asking for a number. What percentage of, I know there's type 1 and 2, don't complicate it. They're similar, actually. Which one? Anyone think it's more genetic or more environmental? It, it would sound like it, right? You eat sugary food that can give you diabetes. That's probably what you all learned. Actually, very much genetic. And guess what? This, the ethnicity groups in this room are all high risk for diabetes. Yeah. 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 It's interesting facts, um, which we'll talk about later, but South Asian and East Asian individuals have smaller pancreases. And pancreas is the organ that releases insulin, which controls your blood sugar. That's because... And evolutionarily, we didn't eat as much carbohydrates as Caucasian people. So our pancreas has evolved to be smaller. So then you migrate to, you know, Europe or Australia where there's, you know, sugar, sweet, high-calorie burgers everywhere. The organ can't handle that much sugar, and it can't control it that well. More likely to get diabetes. Yes? Are these is genetic? Yeah, I see. That's another very interesting question. So to answer your question, Diabetes is more, it's about 70% genetic, which is a bit worrying. So if you have a family history, ask mom and dad, grandparents, you're at risk, right? Same with heart disease. Yes? Schizophrenia. Okay, so for everyone to understand schizophrenia, schizophrenia is where you have delusions, hallucinations, so it's usually auditory hallucinations, and you have disorganized thinking. You can't think straight as well, right? And it's a really debilitating illness, and it's 50% genetic, right? Now, I have a question for you, because this is what the exam dot point is about. How do we get these percentages? It's obviously studies, but I'm asking you, what's the design of the study to get you that percentage? Well, yeah, obviously, you data collect, because you're getting a number, but I'm asking you, what would the study look like? Yeah, close. Yes. Inheritance. Yes. You guys are all very vague. I want you to think what specifics. If I gave you a billion dollars to create a study to look at what percentage of ADHD is genetic, what would you do? Pedigree. Yeah, but then pedigree, you can't get numbers directly. Anyone know? To find out how much of a disease is genetic, it's actually very simple. You get twins, same genes. You look at what percentage of twin two has a condition that twin one has, given that they're monozygotic or identical twin. That's it, right? So you in your exams will definitely see a bunch of questions called concordance studies, right? Where they'll show you a table of twin one and twin two and their percentages. And they'll ask you, which of the diseases is most likely environmental or genetic? And you will have to come to the logical conclusion. We'll do those questions soon. But uh, that's very important. What I'm just going to write here for you is concordance studies. Have a, have a read of concordance studies in your own time, and I'll give you a few questions to do on them as well. They're very high yield. If they are to test this dot point, 50% likelihood they'll give you a concordance study graph or table to analyze. Good. 
All right, let's move on. We're going to go through some diseases that are very much environmental, okay? But the end answer for this dot point, all of you, what you need to say, is that all diseases have some genetic basis and environmental basis, and it varies. And in your exam answer, you want to give conditions that have both, okay? So I've selectively picked a lot of high yield conditions that have both, that have come up in tons of exam papers as well. The first one is this condition called PK. Okay? Fancy name, phenyl ketonuria. Let's break it down together. Phenyl ketones are a type of molecule. What's urea? Urea means urinating, so it's found in the urine of these patients. Okay? But uh, that's what the disease means, just so you understand it generally. Now, to know what it's about, in fetal continuity, it's a genetic disease where you have a knocked out gene that makes this enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. Okay? For those of you who do chemistry, hydroxylase, hydroxyl groups, OH groups, it just adds OH groups to molecules. That's what a hydroxylase does. Now, in this disease, a gene mutation knocks off phenylalanine hydroxylase. This is an exam question. What is going to happen to the levels of this chemical and the levels of this chemical in a normal versus a diseased individual? This is the 2020 exam choice trial paper. Phenylalanine? Very good, right? And you'd say a normal subject relatively would have more tyrosine, less phenylalanine. Very good. So, in, do you all agree the issue here is we're having too much of this chemical now because it can't be converted into tyrosine. Now, too much of any chemical in the body is bad. So what this chemical in particular does is it goes to nerve cells and kills them. So what symptoms do you think a patient would have with this disease? Yeah, they could have, you know, sensory impairment, could be. What else? Think about the brain. If you kill brain cells, yeah. Intellectual disability, that's what will happen, right? What else can happen? Seizures, right? When you have, high, when you have damage to brain cells, they start firing in a very disorganized fashion. They can give you seizures. So we typically see this in Caucasian babies, blonde hair, blue eyes, fair skin babies, they can get this gene mutation. So build up of phenylalanine causes damage to nerve cells. Damage, nerve cells. Now you're not doing medicine, so you don't need to know all the symptoms. I just remember one, intellectual disability, okay? Good. So my question to you is, how do we prevent a poor kid from getting intellectual disability. Imagine you're a doctor, baby's born, it can get intellectual disability from this condition. How can we prevent this using your understanding of HSC biology? You go think back to what you learned with HSC, what can you do for this baby? You all have the answer. I've kind of been feeding to you this lesson. Phenylalanine is an amino acid. Where do amino acids come from? Lookman, where do amino acids come from? Um, the food we eat? Yes. So what can we do for this child to prevent it? There you go. You're already ready to be a doctor now. Very good, right? So all we need to do for this child is restrict phenylalanine from their diet, and they'll be completely normal. Who drinks Coke? Check the Coke can. You'll see in fine script it says contains phenylalanine. The reason they do it is for these mutations, right? The people with these mutations can't have Coke. Um, that's not the only thing, though. It's not just Coke is the primary diet. There's many other foods. There's um, there's a lot of different foods. There's a, I don't know the entire list off my head, but there's certain uh, meats that you can't have which are rich in phenylalanine, um, certain dairy products. So they have to have a very specific diet. They know what foods they can and can't eat. 
but uh, that's all you need to do. So my question to you is, do you all agree this disease is genetic? But do you all agree that phenotype, which is a physical characteristics, intellectual disability is part of phenotype, was ultimately decided by the environment. So this is a really good disease to highlight that genes and the environment affect phenotype. Good. Any questions? Very good.